So I don't really go bike packing and I don't have time for days long bike tours and I generally don't need to carry that much stuff on a bike. But I do appreciate utility, versatility and thoughtful design. And I enjoy having the option to throw some bags on a bike and go out on some longer adventures. In this video, a close look at the new Elkhorn rack sent over to the channel from the company Old Man Mountain based in Bend, Oregon, which promises to be an extremely versatile and durable rack suited for virtually any bike, whether mounted on the front or the rear. Now, long ago, I worked at a bike shop for several years and I've installed and removed and even used several types of racks, but the racks coming out of Old Man Mountain are just in a whole different league. They're designed with the rigors of extreme bike packing, or more appropriately, rack packing in mind, and are constructed from half inch diameter 6061 aluminum for a lightweight, but incredibly durable setup. Now everything is powder coated matte black and the 3.9 by 10.5 inch deck can support up to 25 pounds. Now surprisingly the deck of the Elkhorn rack is actually the same size as his older sibling, the Divide rack. But with the Elkhorn you're essentially trading carrying capacity for versatility. In other words, the Divide can support up to 55 pounds when eyelet mounted and a ridiculous 70 pounds when axle mounted. While the only stated capacity for the Elkhorn, eyelet or axle mounted is 25 pounds. Now, I haven't seriously tested this yet, but I bet that the Elkhorn is easily capable of carrying more than 25 pounds. I mean, I sat on it when it was rear mounted on the eyelets and nothing broke. So I'm betting that this is just a really conservative weight limit, but don't quote me on that. Now with the Elkhorn, what you're getting in return for a reduction in carrying capacity is a truly versatile rack that can basically be mounted to any bike. Since the uprights are separate from the deck, you can orient the deck biased forward or backward while keeping the uprights in the proper orientation. You can also mount the rack to standard eyelets on the frame or fork using the included hardware, which employs machined standoffs to eliminate any interference issues that can occur when mounting a rack directly to the frame or fork. Now the effective width of the rack is two position adjustable since the uprights can be mounted to the inner side of the deck for a front mounted rack, or the outer side of the deck for a wider rear mounted option. Now, if your bike doesn't have eyelets or if you prefer maximum strength, you can also order a separate fit kit that includes a through axle specifically designed to interface with the rack. These axles are manufactured by their sister company, the Robert Axle Project, and are available for thousands of different frames and forks. Now in this configuration, the base of the uprights are bolted directly to the ends of the through axle for ultimate strength. You have this option on the front or the rear of the bike if your frame set uses through axles, and it really offers superior strength over eyelet mounting. I'm running out of adjectives here. Now for stabilizing the rack, you also have a couple of options. If your bike has rack mounts on the frame or fork, you can connect the included extenders from the rack to the upper eyelets. Now for rear mounted racks, you can also attach the extenders to a seat post collar, which I think is sold separately. But there's also a third method, which is arguably more universal than the former options, which is to use the mounting pucks that you'd find in one of the fit kits. Now these pucks basically zip tie to your seat stays or the fork stanchions and offer an upper eyelet mounting point for the extenders. Now the zip ties that are included are much beefier than your typical zip ties and there are frame protector stickers that are included to, you know, protect your frame. I gotta word that better. Now these pucks are a big reason for why these racks are so versatile and it's a reason they're compatible with most full suspension mountain bikes. Now as far as carrying stuff on your bike, you have the upper deck with plenty of mounting and lashing points for bags and lights and on the uprights you have three pack mounts on either side for mounting whatever. Now all of my testing was done with the outer shell basket bag strapped to the top and I even had it mounted widthwise so it kind of overhung on both sides but it wasn't an issue at all even down some fast and loose trails. Now I have to say the thing that I like the most about the rack is just how solid it feels. Once everything was mounted and tightened down, there's no question that it'll handle anything you throw at it. It just kind of becomes an extension of the bike and there's basically zero concern of it failing or bending or coming loose. I also really like the idea that I can pretty much mount it to any one of my bikes depending on my needs. And as my collection of bike bags and carry options continues to grow, I'll basically always have a way to mount them. Now, as far as dislikes of this rack, there honestly aren't too many. And one thing that I haven't mentioned yet is that the Elkhorn rack comes in two different sizes. The short version fits up to 27.5 by 2.8 inch tires or 700C by 50 millimeter tires. And then the tall version fits up to 29 by 3.25 inch tires with room to spare. Now I'm sure I'm missing some fundamental design element or maybe it's just not cost effective to manufacture, 
but it seems like you could just employ an adjustable length dropout like on the divide rack and have one version of the Elkhorn rack that truly fits any bike. Now the other thing that struck me as mildly inconvenient was the extenders that support the rack. Now the kit includes two lengths of extenders, presumably a shorter one for the front and a longer one for the rear. But in my experience with this particular bike, which is a size small Poseidon Redwood, mounting the rack to the rear was a little bit of a challenge because the short extenders were too short and the long ones were just a little bit too long. I know it's kind of a petty ask, but including a third medium length extender might help some people experiencing the same thing. Now ultimately I ended up trimming the long extenders down a bit to fit the rack on the rear of the bike and it worked out just fine. It was just an extra step that I wasn't anticipating and others may not have the capacity or the desire to modify the extenders like I did. And then lastly, there's the issue of price. Yes, this is an expensive rack system at $148 US in mid 2022, Plus there's the cost of any fit kits that you need for your particular setup. But like I mentioned in my previous review of the divide rack, it's really an investment into a rack system that may ultimately be the last rack you ever need to buy. With a lifetime warranty and versatility that promises compatibility with virtually any bike, you should be covered for most of your bike carry needs for the foreseeable future. Plus you have to remember you're supporting a small company that shares the same passion for cycling and adventure as you. So would you rather your money go to a caring group of avid cyclists or some soulless sellout corporation trying to undercut the little guy. Dang, that was kind of dark. Anyways, I've been really impressed with this rack. And like I said, even though I'm not a hardcore rack packer, I appreciate a good rack. Well, you grow up. And more importantly, good design from a company who values quality products and long-term sustainability over cheap materials and planned obsolescence. Now, if you wanna learn more about Old Man Mountain and the new Elkhorn rack, be sure to check out the link in the description below. Thanks for watching and thanks again for subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.